Hey y'all, welcome to the channel and peace and blessings uh, be to you. Peace and grace. Let's uh, jump right into this thing. So today I want to talk about um, keeping your spiritual clothes clean. Okay, let's jump right into this starting in Romans uh, chapter 13 verse 12. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shining armor of right living. You can see right there your dark deeds, your worldly deeds, sinful deeds are like having on dirty clothes. Okay. Now, when you first come to Yeshua and you first come to Jesus and you ask for forgiveness of your sins, it is like taking off your worldly clothes so then you're naked and usually you'll shower you'll cleanse yourself so the way i would see this is the lord would give me a dream and he would show me myself that i had on dirty clothes i took those dirty clothes off and i got in a tub and i was either taking a shower or taking a bath and that is spiritual cleansing okay the holy spirit does that through the washing of the word Okay, and then you're going to put on more clothes like brand new shining armor, looking nice, looking clean and pretty of right living. Okay, so it takes right living, living according to the word, living according to Yah's standards. That is what your clothes are. And I'm going to show you it's hard to keep your clothes clean. It's easy to explain it, it's easy to say it, but it's hard to actually do it. And what's hard about this is our desire to go back or getting bored or whatever. You know, there's different things that cause it, stress, different things that cause it, okay? Um, but we have to try and keep our nice shining armor our nice shining white clothes, nice and pretty. All right. So when you when you die, or when if you sure comes back first, whichever comes first, your clothes have to remain clean. You cannot have a spot on you. So repenting does work, but there's a lot more to it than just repenting. You can't repent constantly. Because eventually your repentance becomes something of just tradition. And you just keep messing up and repenting, messing up and repenting. Um, Yah wants us to overcome the world just like Yeshua overcame the world. We are not here to just be people that just repent over and over and over and over again. Eventually we have to get it right. Eventually we have to start walking perfect before the Lord. Remember, a long time ago, I made a, a video of how do we, we have to overcome these seven Canaanite uh, peoples that are in the promised land. So when you are right living, there's opposition constantly, and it's constantly trying to get you to get your clothes dirty, okay? All right, let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes Chapter 9, verse 8. Let your clothes be white all the time, and let not oil be lacking on your head. Don't let anointing oil not be on your head. And make sure that your clothes are white all the time. Like I said, it's harder. It's easier said than done. We know what this life is like. We know walking out this life is not easy. But when you get it right, when you repent and you start walking in your commands, you observing the dietary law, you're doing the feasts and festivals, you are learning on the Sabbath, you're getting it. But now comes the, the part of staying that way. Uh, let's see. Let's go. To start in verse 3, okay? And we're going to understand this a little bit differently. 
All right, Joshua was wearing dirty clothes and was standing in front of the angel. The angel said to those standing in front of him, take off those dirty clothes. Then the angel said to Joshua, look, I have taken away your sin from you and I'm giving you beautiful, fine clothes. Then I said, put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and dressed him while the Lord's angel stood there. He was wearing dirty clothes and he, this is a, a priest. He is the, um, Joshua was the uh, high priest, I believe, high priest. And um, he was standing before the Lord with dirty clothes on, okay? And Satan was standing opposite of him, accusing him, all right? And the Lord starts off by saying, hey, isn't this a brand I plucked from the fire? You know, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. That's where you sure got that, the Lord rebuke you from. Is uh, because that's what was said to Satan back in the book of Zechariah. But they took off his dirty clothes. His sins were forgiven. Okay? And that's what I was saying. That's what happens when we repent. That's what happens when we come to Yeshua and ask for our forgiveness of sins. Okay? He takes off our dirty clothes and then puts us on beautiful, fine clothes. All right? And our job is to keep them exactly the way he gave them to us. All right. And side note, they wore turbans back then. So today we think the Muslims are the ones who wear turbans. But the Hebrews also wore turban on their heads. Just a fun fact. The book of Isaiah. And the thing is, how do we... Keep our clothes clean. And like I said, it's much harder to do than it is to say. It's easier for us to say, hey, um, this is how it works. But it's much harder to actually act out. So how do we act it out? So first off, if we look at Isaiah 55... Um, it says uh, verse 6 Seek the Lord while he may be found Call upon him while he is near Let the wicked forsake his way And the unrighteous man his thoughts Let him return to the Lord And he will have mercy on him And to our God For he will abundantly pardon And Yah says For my thoughts are not your thoughts And my ways are not your ways Okay so when we look at this, we run to him at first and we forsake our ways, but we can't go back to those ways. We have to stay with our feet planted as a tree's roots in one spot, not going backwards, not moving, walking forward only on the Lord's path that he has set for us. All right. Uh. Let's go to Jeremiah 17. All right. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. All right. That lets you know the Lord tests our hearts and he tests our thoughts constantly. Every thought you have. Every move you make is being looked at by the Lord. And he's testing constantly. When the Lord says he's testing you, it means he's watching. But he watches closely to see what you're going to do. All right. Um, and he gives every man according to his ways. So we have to make sure our thoughts and our actions constantly line up to the word of Yah. We have to make sure, you know, the way we keep our clothes clean is by number one, making sure our hearts and our actions line up to his word. Okay? Let's say you mess up. All right? You mess up. Now you repent. And you have to push through 
those feelings of inadequacy. You have to push through those feelings of rejection. You have to push through those feelings of um, self, you know, where, where you're just kind of punishing yourself. You have to push through those feelings to stay in Yah's presence. And you feel like you've fallen away from him, and you you have. But you can get back into that same place and move forward by just being real and by learning the lesson. Yah will have you repeat this same one thing over and over until you get past it. Then once you get past that, he will show you something else. He says, okay, I don't like this. And then you start working on that. And as you battle those things, as you start trying to overcome each issue that is a deeper and deeper heart issue. First, he deals with your actions, the outside physical things that you do. Okay. And then he starts dealing with your thoughts and your heart. Once he gets your thoughts right, he goes into the deeper heart issues. Then he goes into the deeper soul issues. So there's always learning, there's always pushing, pressing, deeper and deeper, self-examining more and more, constantly. He's always trying to perfect you. He sees every flaw that is in you, and he wants to bring it to the surface, have you acknowledge it, learn from it, and don't do it again. That's how you keep your clothes clean. And that's why I said it's easier said than done. It is a lifelong journey. It is something you will forever struggle with. We could look back and think about Paul. Paul struggled with something. He had a thorn in his side and he asked, uh, he asked Yah multiple times to take it. Please take this away from me. And Yah said no. Because in your weakness, I'm made stronger. You see, we're supposed to see our inadequacies and we're supposed to continue to press toward Yah, to give it to Him, to allow Him to work in our lives. But it's in those times that we fail. You see, that's what Paul was, was writing those things out of, that feeling of failure when he felt like, man, I done blew it, I done messed up again, all right? And he eventually he got to the point where he says, I don't even know if after I have ran this race and I've been teaching everybody else, if I'm even going to make heaven myself. Because he realized the reality that it is just that hard to get into heaven. It is just that hard to stay walking perfect. This is not this is a fight. That's why it says fight the good fight of faith. It is a fight. It is a war for your soul. And the enemy is giving it all he's got. So you have to give it all you've got. Okay? I want you guys to be encouraged with this quick word. And understand that the way Yeshua gives us our clothes when we first come to him in repentance is the way he's expecting us to go to heaven. That's that's the place that he wants us to be when we pass away. He wants us to be perfect, always expecting to stand before him at any moment. So repent and stay clean. Harder said than done, but we can do it together. Y'all have a great day.